Good morning, good evening, good afternoon from wherever you are. Uh, it's so nice to have you once again uh, as we discuss the book, When God Says Remember. Last time we talked about a day to remember, chapter 3. And previously we had talked about chapter 1, uh, rest for the rushed and set free to obey. But today, today we are talking about history's greatest hoax. History's greatest hoax. But before we start, I'd just like to invite uh, our, our co-panelists here to introduce themselves. We'll start from my right. Hello, my name is Sabir and Hello. I'm so glad to be here. Fantastic. Hi, my name is Winston and welcome back. Yeah. Uh, j before I invite Winston to take us through a summary, perhaps let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, we come before you, Father, this time. Once again, O oh Lord God, we ask for your grace. We ask you, O oh Father, to be with us, to be our companion as we discuss this book when you said remember. O oh Father, now be with us, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Winston, please give us a summary of Chapter 4, History's Greatest Hoax. Um, thank you so much for the introduction, Tisha Bismarck. And over to start with the chapter, History's Greatest Hoax. So the first thing that we need to ask ourselves is, what is a hoax? And, you know, speaking of hoax, sometimes you see things aren't always what they appear to be. And I feel like there are very good examples when in the beginning of the book of McFinley, where first he starts by speaking of the fact that for many, very, very many centuries, scientists uh, believed that Earth was stationary. And everything, including the sun, the stars, rotated around the, the sun. But the fact, sorry, rotated around the earth. But the fact that they actually believed that this was true doesn't mean that it was actually true. And later on, there was this scientist called Copernicus, who is the one who actually figured out that it's, it's, it's not earth that is stationary, but earth is the one that is rotating around the sun. Another good example is um, the belief that the spider was insect. You know, for many years, people used to think that the spider was an insect and it has six legs. But the fact is that it is an arachnid with eight legs. And I feel like, you know, this brings us to the deceitful nature of Saturn, where we see that Saturn is really good in his tactics and his work of deceiving the people Very. of God. And something that we see is that according to these things that we've seen, the fact that um, people believe that Earth was stationary and the theory about the spider, the big question is, could it be a tradition like this one could have slipped into the church? And what I actually say is, you know, for someone to deceive you, a very good example again given in the book is for a counterfeiter. You know, if you're a counterfeiter, let's take an example, Teacher Bismarck. If you were to make a counterfeit of money here in Kenya, would you like make a counterfeit of 13 shillings or rather 300 shillings? Actually not, because it doesn't exist. If you are good in your work of counterfeiting, you will probably make 100 shilling notes, 200 shilling notes, and a thousand shilling notes. So it actually also brings the fact that Saturn is really good in his work and he targets the truth. He clothes the truth with falsehood so that, you know, we can see that it's actually true. Yes. But the real nature is that it's false. It's, it's false. And so the big question regarding that you're speaking of Sabbath is who changed the Sabbath? When was it changed and why? Yeah, and we see from Malachi chapter 3, 6, I think this speaks about God. It says that, you know, God is the same. He doesn't change. And we see that he actually didn't change the Sabbath. And if God didn't change the Sabbath, did Jesus change the Sabbath? Neither did he. He did not. And even as we speak of in the previous chapter, that... Um, you know, even when Jesus ascended in heaven, he left us with uh, a pledge to, to keep the Sabbath also. 
So his disciples also didn't change the Sabbath. And this is actually where we get the theories and myths where how the Sabbath changed. Where we have the, the, the prophecies about the, the mysterious little horn and about the beast. Speaking of the, where the beast symbolizes the kingdoms and all that. And I feel like, you know, this historical change on how the Sabbath came to change from Saturday to Sunday, it has really, you know, brought some sort of confusion. So I'd like to ask Subira, you know, according to this historical change, where we see in the book that the Sabbath was changed from Saturday to Sunday, what do you think, um, how does it influence our Christian faith and how does it affect our spiritual journey? Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for that beautiful summary and also the question that you posed. My thing that comes out to me first is, does the church have the authority to change God's law? Definitely and even not. as we, yeah, so even as we looked in our prophecy class for teens class, we, we talked about the law with no amendments and how God's law is immutable, unchangeable. It's constant. It has sort of had a timeless effect. Throughout all these generations, there's not been compromise of the law for the sake of the impurities and inconsistencies of man. Therefore, as there's a historical shift from Saturday observance of the Sabbath to Sunday observance of the Sabbath, that's extremely detrimental to what we stand for. And so even as Seventh-day Adventists, for us to stay with this Sabbath rule, it's really to defy the so-called authority that man has put for himself. And so man has no authority. Our faith needs to be rooted in the law and most importantly, rooted in truth. The second our faith is dependent on the authority of man it's not really strong as much as we want it to be strong. It's not really. And so I think the influence on our faith and the impact of it is many people who go to church on Sunday, whether they know it or not, are defying God, intentionally defying God because they're not keeping the Sabbath. And I know that there are brothers and sisters in these different denominations of Christianity, and we recognize them as with us because we all believe in Christ Jesus. However, it's very crucial to have an unwavering understanding of what God's truth and God's law is. Yeah, thank you so much, Subira. And we have actually seen that um, this historical change has an effect on our spiritual journey. And just to touch a bit on the history of how the Sabbath get, got to, change, to be changed from Saturday to Sunday, um, we see it from prophecies and the translation of the pro prophecies from what has been experienced in history. We get answers both from the Bible and history. We're from the Bible about the little horn, the mysterious little horn. Change, uh, times. Beast. Yeah, yeah, the and beast Lord. and all that. That's biblical reference. And from historical reference, we see from the superpowers mm. all the way from Daniel's uh, rain, no, not mm -hmm. rain. The, the when Daniel was there, yeah. from Babylon, from Babylon to Medio Persia, to Greece, to yeah. Greece yeah. and to the and Roman, Rome. Mm. where the Roman Church now changed the Sabbath. Constantine, you have something. Oh, I apologize. Really quickly, that made me definitely think about a quote that I saw in this book, where it is important to choose to follow the Bible and God's law, and obey His word rather than the tradition or human teachings. Just really quickly and how sometimes we're so focused on this traditional norms. And so because humans have done it for a long time, why are we defying? But I would like to argue that if we are faced with this normancy that is against God's law, our defiance becomes so much more rare. And so experiencing this rarity of defiance in the name of God is ex very, very crucial to the human experience. And God prides in those who are faithful towards him. Yeah, thank you so much, Subira. And just to wind up, um, for us, we recognize and we know that the true biblical Sabbath 
is on Saturday. And so just to ask Teacher Bismarck, how do you think we as the believers of the biblical Sabbath, you know, how can we respond to this historical change that happened ages ago and in a way that can still promote unity among our churches? Yeah, yeah. yeah I think that's a good question. For us, eh? Uh, as Sabbath keepers, I think our our past is one, you know, and it's even given there in the book, and uh, it references uh, the book of Joshua chapter twenty-four, verse fifteen, where it says, "Choose for yourselves this day uh, you will whom serve. you will serve." Yeah? Will it be the Bible or tradition? Will it be Jesus or religious leaders? Yes. Will it be God's law or man's law? Will it be God's instruction or human teaching? What will it be? Will it be God's way or man's way? You know, we have to choose for ourselves uh, precisely what we will do. However, how can we reconcile this with our fellow brethren? And does that mean that everybody who worships on Sunday will go to hell? Uh, certainly not. It does not mean that. It, what it does mean is that, you know, perhaps we could conclude that there are some people who worship on Sunday who truly love God. You know, and are worshiping him to the best of their knowledge. You know, and they have whatever knowledge that they have. You know, they say, you know, this is what I know, and this is what I'll, I shall, I shall do. However, for the people who know the truth and are actively and uh, purposefully uh, rejecting it and looking to do their own thing, you know, then un unfortunately, I think you know they are defiant uh, against God. You know, they are they are defying God, as it were. And so, you know, our job as Christians is really to pray for them and to ask God really to have mercy on them and to show them the right way. And I think that is our duty. That's our duty. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. And I think here we have a privilege where we get the privilege of choice, just yes. as you said, where we can either choose Bible or tradition or the man's way or God's way. Yeah, thank yes. you. Thank you so much, Winston. And thank you so much, dear viewer. Thank you so much, Subira. Thank you so much, everyone, uh, for joining us uh, on, on uh, discussing this, this, this particular chapter. You know, it's so important for us to know, you know, uh, these sort of, or really the truth behind uh, the Sabbath. Uh, uh, yes. And <laughs> <laughs> funnily enough that this, really quickly, <laughs> it's called History's Great Hoax. But... We find that in human history, there is a historical record of our shift into sin, but also there's a historical record all the way back to the creation story in which God offers us truth. So in our history, there is light and darkness. Choose light. Amen. 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 Choose light. Choose light. Well, join us once again, ladies and gentlemen, as uh, next time uh, we'll be discussing chapter five. Chapter five, and it's a wonderful chapter. It's called An Advance on Eternity. An Advance on Eternity. See you then. Thank you. Thank you.